You don't realize how noisy that thing is until you turn it off. Okay. Uh, wrong document. It's next week. So, can anybody tell me what our objective is today? Has something to do with water. <laughs> we actually have two objectives. When, when you have a sample of anything, in, in our case, We've got a sample of um, um, let's see, is it copper, copper sulfate. chloride, sulfate? Yeah, copper sulfate. When you have a sample of copper sulfate, or you have a sample of um, sodium hydrogen carbonate. Uh, one of the ways that you can uh, glean information about these compounds is just to heat them up. Right, get them real hot. If you do it with this one, and it's got some water attached to it, then you're going to drive off that water. And if you start off with a known amount of this material, then what you end up with is a lesser mass, right? So where'd the mass go? You evaporated some of it, right? You evaporated, got rid of the water. Now we use this copper sulfate compound because uh, it has, it's very forgiving. You can get it really, really hot and it won't melt. It won't decompose at all. So it's, it's has a wide temperature range. It's very forgiving, which is good for student labs. Uh, what we want to find out about this one is, what is that X value? Right. And remember, this is in terms of numbers, moles. Right? So for every one mole of that compound, copper 2 sulfate, we want to know how many moles of water are associated with it. Right. You look on the bottle, when we go on the lab, look on the bottle, you'll see a number. Right. But I want you to prove it with this experiment. What is that number? Um, with this one, this is waters of hydration. And when we write them, we always put that dot in the middle of a line. And then how many moles of water are associated with each one of these? That's the ratio. With this compound, you don't see any water. Right? The water is actually part of the molecular structures of that, of that compound, of the formula. It's part of the formula. This one, the water molecules are separate. Those are hydration waters. In other words, when you form the crystal structure of copper sulfate, and whatever it is, it's a pretty blue thing, then it automatically traps the water in the structure with it. So those water molecules are... Um, they're independent molecules that are in the structure. But here, this, is, this contains water, but you don't know there's water in there until you heat it up. Right? This is water as a constitution. Right? So, can there be water in that molecule? What do you need to have in the molecule to make water? Hydrogen and oxygen, right? So you got hydrogen here and oxygen there. Okay, so when we heat that up, it's going to make something. Right? I don't know. It's going to make some solid. Uh, it's going to make some gases. Right? One of those gases is water. But the other gas could be what? Carbon dioxide or carbon monoxide? Possible. This one's a little trickier. Right? That's why it takes up so many more pages to talk about this one than it does that one. <clears throat> okay, so that's that's the basic concept 
we kind of behind what we're doing today. We're going to do two eatings and keep track of the mass. We're going to use, we're going to heat both of them, well, separately in two separate crucibles, right? shaped like about like that. They're made out of ceramic <clears throat> that are uh, glazed ceramic, so they're impermeable to whatever. Uh, and they can stand high heat. They can't stand dropping them. Like, <laughs> students have dropped them before and they shatter. But if you put your material in here, how do you know how much you got to start with? You weigh the crucible first, don't you? Right? Weigh the crucible first, record that weight, and then add so much of the material, either one, and weigh it again. And the amount of material you have in there is the difference. Okay. And that's the difference when you start. And when you end, you're going to weigh it again. Now, the mass of the crucible hadn't changed. So you just subtract that same weight from, which, from the new mass. And now you know what is left in there. So it should be less than what you started with. Right? If it's more than what you started with, then something's wrong. <clears throat> Okay, for this one, it's easy. The difference in the ways is due to the loss of that water. So if you know the mass that you lost, I don't know, um, half a gram, maybe, just let's, I'm just for argument's sake. If it's half a gram of loss, a change in mass is a half a gram, it's due to water, right? So um, how much water is that? Right, 18.02 grams per mole, molar mass of water. So we know how many moles of water. Okay. How many moles of copper sulfate are there? When you get through heating it and you subtract the mass of the crucible, what do you have left over? Yeah, that. So now you have the leftover mass and you do the same thing, only use dip, use copper sulfate molar mass then. And that gives you the moles of this that was lost. And this is the moles that was left over. And then you ratio them. Right? You put the moles of this divided by the moles of that, and you should get close to a whole number. Okay, it won't be exact, but it should be close enough that you can round to the next whole number. And that will tell you what this value is. Okay, that one's easy. This one is a little more difficult. You're going to get a before and after weight, and you're going to get a mass of solid after you after you weigh it uh, the second time. You're going to get a mass of solid. We got to figure out what that solid is made of. Right, and to do that, you need to speculate about what these gases are. We know one of them is going to be water, but what's the other one? Well, the other one could be carbon monoxide, or it could be two moles of carbon monoxide, right? or it could be carbon dioxide, or it could be two moles of carbon dioxide. Those are the four possibilities that are discussed in here. In, in here. Let's see where it's. Um, let me go back to your copy. Yeah. Okay. I'll put that in here. I didn't put it in there, did I? No, I didn't. This one goes in our notebook, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah it should be in your notebook already. <clears throat> the the at least the introduction, safety concerns, materials used. Um, steps in the procedure, um, set up a table for the data, um, and set aside a, 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 a page or two for calculations and a page or two for discussion and questions. If there are any questions, I think there are questions here. Yeah, lab questions. 
that's how you, that's how your notebook should be set up now. Um, so once you get this information, um, if we can speculate on what the solid is, and it depends on what we call what we say about these as to what the solid is. Now, if we extract water from this thing, right, just from that molecule, two hydrogens won't work because uh, there's only one hydrogen in there. So we need two of them. So if we say two of them, okay, now we can, we've got two hydrogens. We can say, all right, if water comes out of that, uh, what's left over? Well, two sodiums are left over. Uh, no hydrogens are left over. Two carbons are left over. And uh, we used up one of the hydrogen. So four oxygens are left over. Right, so that's left. Let's see if that's right. Let's see. Two sodiums, four carbon. Nope. One carbon. Right, two carbons here, two carbons there. Um, we start on six oxygens, and now we've got one here, so this is a five. There we go. So this is what we would expect to be left with if we're making, um, pulling water out of that. Now, if we say, okay, what if it's um, carbon monoxide? What would be left over? Well, if it's carbon monoxide, then we would have uh, a carbon, and we would have, let's see, uh, uh, excuse me, that's not right. Uh, four. No, that's not right either. Two. There we go. Um, if we take a, a, a carbon and a monoxide out of that, a carbon monoxide out of that, then we're starting off with uh, two carbons, so we've only got one carbon left. Let's see. Well, that doesn't work right. If we make water out of that, we've got something left over with, sod with sodium, carbon, and oxygen. Right. This thing does a better job of discussing it. Let me use the crib sheet. Uh, let's see. Uh, here we go. Okay. This is a better discussion for this part of the reaction. So let's, that was really simple. So in this case, we would have um, some solid, and then we would have either water, we would have water, and then we would have either CO or CO2. Yeah, this one's got sodium in it, some sodium containing substance. Um, if, if we go to CO2, then we have sodium hydrogen carbonate, and we have one water, and what if we have only one CO2? But then what have we got left over? Well, let's see, we got uh, two sodiums, and we got um, a carbonate. If we do two of them, that means there's our two sodiums. Um, we got one water here. Uh, oh, two hydrogens. There we go. We got six oxygens. One of them here. Two is three, and then three is there. Uh, now it's six because that's too many. So what we need is two of these. No. Two there. Two sodiums. Two hydrogens. Six oxygens. One. Five. 
Well, that doesn't balance. Wait a minute. Six oxygens. Got one here, got four here, and we got three there. Right? So that's five, eight. That's eight oxygen. So that doesn't balance. That doesn't balance if we do it that way. It's got to be this way. Now we have two carbons here. That's good. We have two sodiums there. We have two hydrogens here. We got six oxygens. One, three, and one, two, six. There we go. That's a possibility. But what if the other major possibility is if we have um, also two of these and we got water and we got um, just one CO2, then we've still got to have a carbon in this product. If we got carbons over here, we don't have to have carbons there. So if we have a, a sodium, carbonate like that, then how does that work? Oh, two carbons here. Well, there's a carbon there and there's a carbon there. Two sodiums, two hydrogens, six oxygens. So we're going to use one oxygen here. We're going to use three there. We need three more, three more there. Yeah, that works, doesn't it? Is that balanced? Uh, yeah, that should balance. Okay, so these are our two prime candidates. So either you've got uh, sodium oxide as your solid or sodium carbonate as your solid, right? We can't catch the carbon dioxide because it's mixed in with air with water. So we're doing them by difference. So how would we tell the difference? If we're saying one of these is correct, can't both be correct. Well, <clears throat> that's where the acid test comes in. We're gonna use one molar of hydrochloric acid to test the solid afterwards. So we've got, we've got to collect the solid in our crucible, scrape it out and dissolve it in water. Both of these are soluble in water. Right? So we'll put them in solution and then we'll add hydrochloric acid to it. Well, if we if the solid is this one, oops, <laughs> nitrous oxide, Na2, right? If the solid is this one and we add hydrochloric acid to it, what do we get? Well, we get sodium chloride plus water. Right? So we need two of these, and we need two of these. I think that's balanced. All right, so if we add uh, acid to this, uh, what's that do? Well, there's nothing you can see, right? The reaction just gives you salt water on that side. But if it's this one, plus HCl, what do you get? Well, you get this one right here, and you get this one. Um, yeah, I think that's right. So we need uh, two hydrogens, two chlorines, because it's two sodiums, this is carbonate. Yeah, that's balanced. If that happens and you get carbonic acid, this stuff is very unstable. Right? It wants to decompose into CO2 and water. And you're going to see fizzing. If you see fizzing, that breaks the time between these two. And you know it's this one. Okay. The other way that you can tell the difference is quantitatively. You can calculate with the balanced equation here um, uh, based upon 
one of these equations here. Right? If it's this one, you can say, I'm starting off with this much mass, use stoichiometry, this much mass of sodium hydrogen carbonate would be the same number of moles for both of them. Well, if we know this is a balanced equation, how many moles of this could you produce? And then can change it to mass on this side. You know how to do that. Mass to moles, moles over here, change it back to mass. That's what you should expect as a residual solid in your crucible. Do the same thing for this one. If this is the right one, then you'll have a different mass. Right? And say, all right, I got these two possibilities. How much mass did I have in my crucible? Is it close to this one or close to that? And that'll also confirm it. Okay. Um, I thought I put that in the in the method. I guess I did. Because you've only got how many what a couple of pages? I only got one page. Huh? I only got one page. Yeah, front and back. Yeah. Yeah, it's a page. Um okay. It must be in the bright space. Then more complete. Method in bright space. I'll check to be sure. Because there's a there's a, a, a better discussion, better than I just gave you, I think, <clears throat> about what we're doing. Um, okay, so when we go in the lab, you're gonna have uh, crucibles, and I've got some nice fresh clean ones in there, right? Ones that haven't been used over and over again. So you can start off with some clean stuff. And the method tells you to heat them up first. I just say, we say burn them off. And that just uh, drives off any water or any volatiles that may be collected, burns off any dust or whatever. And then um, after you do that, then you put the crucible in a desiccator. And know what a desiccator is? It's, it's a container. Right. Ours is, is shaped like a bowl with a lid on it. Right. It's got a handle on top. And then it's got a metal screen here. And in the bottom is a desiccant. We use dryerite. It's calcium sulfate. And it's got a color indicator. In it. It's blue when it's dry. And it turns pink when it's saturated with water. So what it does is, with this closed environment, it sucks up moisture. Right? And that's good, because when your crucible's sitting in there, it's hot. Right? Your crucible's hot, and it's cooling down. As it cools down, if it's in the open air, it's going to collect moisture. Right? The colder it gets, the more moisture it collects. So we want it to cool down in a 0% uh, humidity environment. That's what this is. This is metal in your, in your uh, desiccator so that uh, you put a hot thing on it and it won't melt through the plastic because the rest of this is plastic. <clears throat> and it's big. I bought some new ones. We used to have little bitty ones. It took forever to cool down because they would heat up so hot that they wouldn't radiate enough. So I got some big ones. So you can put this thing in your big desiccator and it should cool down relatively fast. But you do that every time you've heated it up, you want to put it in that desiccator and let it cool down to room temperature before you measure its mass. Um, so um, when you do that, and this is this has got a flat bottom on it. When you do that, you're gonna um, the best thing to do is to take the desiccator and the crucible together with the crucible inside, go over to the balance and then open it up. So the less time it stays out in the atmosphere, the better while you get its mass. Uh, the thing about it is, this is a good seal right here around the whole thing. Um, it's, I've used vacuum grease. Right? It's really thick stuff. So it's gonna be hard to get the lid off. So the best way to get the lid off is to find yourself a, a device like uh, maybe a spatula like this, 
and get underneath it and pry it loose. I'll show you when we go in there. And just, just pop it loose and then it'll come off easy. But when you when you put it down, you want to just kind of wiggle it a little bit to get a good seal. Um, so that's basically it. You're going to heat, cool, and measure the mass. Heat, cool, measure the mass. Heat, cool, measure the mass. Now these crucibles, um, you got a, a ring stand, a right, solid cast iron base with a tube with a rod in it, and then you've got a device, uh, a ring that has a screw on it, like that. That's attached to the ring stand. And this with this screw, you can tighten it down, and you can adjust the height. Well, across that thing there is a. Uh, is a um, clay triangle. It's a steel with a, a clay cylinder around uh, each leg. So your crucible will fit right in there. And then your, your uh, flame right, can heat up the bottom of it, okay? Um, and the instructions tell you how long to do it, like five minutes or so. Uh, the nice thing about the uh, copper sulfate part of the experiment is when it's got water in it, it's blue. It's a pretty blue. When you drive off all the water, it turns white. So you can look at it. Now, these crucibles also have lids. I didn't mention that. There's a lid that goes on there. You want to weigh both the crucible and its lid, and keep those two together. Don't mix them up. Why? Because you're going to have a lid sitting on top over here, but it's going to be kind of cocked off to the side so that you got a little bit of gap for the gases to escape. But the lid's there in case it gets too hot and it pops. If it pops, then the lid will catch it. That's why you need to know the mass of the lid and the crucible. Um, Okay, so I guess you need to get hands on now and, and uh, ask questions. Mm -hmm. Getting the data, getting the data is easy. That's the fun part. 